Ah, Vespa, the iconic one and only Vespa. I've had my share of ride time with this brand through the years, starting with some two-stroke action with the PX. Then there was the LX, which I had in Coffee Brown, a navy blue GTV, and the GTV Della Moda. Oh, I also had a Stella, four-stroke, but uh, that doesn't count. In this episode, we take a closer look at the Vespa Sejourney. This is actually the second edition Sejourney. The first one came out in 1951, known then as the Vespa Sport Sejourney. Now that bike was built to roll and race in the highly regarded Sejourney Internazionale di Varese. That scoot went on to beat everyone and capture nine gold medals. And with that, a reputation was born. Welcome to Machina Moto Features. Grazie. Vespa has gone through the hands of several distributors through the years in our country, and currently it has been in the able hands of Moto Italia. It's been with them for quite some time now. This latest Fender Light offering from Vespa is special in the sense that it houses the most powerful Vespa engine to date. This engine is called a 300 HPE and is capable of dishing out 12% more power and 18% more torque. Yep, it improved. Introduced back in 2018, this is Vespa's mostest that can boast us. 23.8 HP. Not really big in the scheme of things, but enough to easily get up to around 130 kph. So it's got a lot going for its single cylinder, single overhead cam power plant. It is a CVD automatic. Frame is Vespa's age-old monocoque design made from sheet metal with reinforced welded parts. Suspension at the front is a single-arm dual-chamber hydraulic shock absorber with coaxial spring. At the rear, we got dual-effect shocks with adjustable preload. Front and rear brakes have 220 mm discs, both with ABS, which is awesome. Wheels are 12 inches with tires at 12070 at the front and 13070 at the rear. Fuel capacity is at 9. .5 two liters. <laughs> Good morning, Metro. Here we are at rush hour down south. While I'm quite familiar with the higher displacement Vespas, you know what? In the city, I actually prefer the small ones in the 150cc arena. I really enjoyed my LX before. It was light, suspension was Vespa awesome, and very easy to use. But of course, the GT series is no slouch. There's more power here. To this day, I'm not really sure if we can classify the GT series as a maxi scoot, but in its playing field and category, its handling has a distinct advantage over others due to its shorter wheelbase. Simply put, it's one of the best out there. Because of its monocoque frame, we got rigidity and less body stress at the corners, giving more work to the suspension. And the stock shocks can clearly handle the stress. Even though the Vespa GT body didn't change much in almost two decades, you will stand out in the crowd. You will be special. You will be cool. Hi everyone. Ingat. And while this perspective won't matter to some, the Vespa will always score high in the pride of ownership department, well, at least for me. Acceleration test in three, two, one, go. Here we have it, the Vespa Sei Giorni. Sei Giorni. As you can see, this is derived still from the GT body, which came out a good, what, over 15 years ago? Lamp is on the fender, so to me, this is GTV. 
right? GT, the lamp is up there. Lamp down there, GTV. Lamp up there is GT. So this is a GTV of sorts, but with a single seat. Because usually the GTV has split seats. Now, I had two GTVs in my lifetime thus far. And uh, one of my biggest complaints would be the split seat because I am six feet tall and I have really long legs. Mm. And I would end up being seated like a little bit in the front. So the knees would be touching that sometimes. But that was the Ispogi mode. You know, I, I didn't mind because it looked so cool. But in terms of comfort, the GTV was not for my height. So now they come up with this configuration, but now with a single seat. And what's so cool about this seat is the fact that it looks like it's built for one person, where in fact, you can still have a pillion. It's approved for a pillion. But when you look at it, it looks like it's for one person. So looks wise, nothing really changed much except for the seat. For what is to me a GTV that is now in a state journey package. So this is different also. And this, of course, this whole thing here, this is new. We got some honeycomb. I don't know if you can see because it's dark, but it's honeycomb over here. So that's also different. You also have a numbered plate here. Now this is absolutely classy. So this whole black numbered plate deal came from the legendary Squadra Corse from way back the 1950s. That had this too. So as you can see, black, polished. We know that this is now number 4715. It's got red trim and this actually complements, you know, the red trim that we see here in the tires, matte black red with the decals as well. It's a giorni outlined by red and you also got that in the rear tire as you can see. So that's the nice touch over there. With Vespa, everything is about detail, right? It's all these details. Okay, apologies for the dirty engine. <laughs> so anyway, say Journey now has the latest version of its most powerful engine for the Vespa 300 HPE. HPE. See that? HPE stands for High Performance Engine. So this is the latest version of this. So this is now a 23.8 horsepower. So compared to the old, that's a 12% increase. And it's torque. And this is what I noticed with this HPE engine. Compared to my two GTVs before, the pull of this engine is just... ah different and so fun. The torque is now at 26 Nm at 5,250 revs. So the increase in torque from the old is now at 18%. So good job on the engine. Looking at our cluster here, it's pretty much the same as before, but with this one, the color scheme, that's what's different. You got some bronze wrapping around everything. I don't know if the camera will do justice to that. Still nice and sturdy. Got the clock over here. For the switches, this is not what I'm used to with what I remember from the older GTVs or GT body Vespas. I would say the older finish or what's the word, that thing <laughs> would be better maybe. I just can't put my finger on it. But the switches are pretty solidly built. Very confident in the clicks. So this pretty much is the same also from the old ones. Bar ends pretty much the same. Mirrors, Vespa. I love the Vespa mirrors. You hear me criticize mirrors a lot. And I remember one of the comments asking, Zach, what kind of mirrors do you like? There's no mirror that you like. Of course there's a mirror I like, and that is a Vespa mirror. Solid built, nice and thick. And the chrome on it is good quality as well. As you can see, Piaggio Vespa. This whole color, by the way, is called Grey Titanio or titanium gray, I, I think, <laughs> in other words. Now to my eye, it's like green gray. That's what it looks like to me. But in the camera, as I'm looking at the monitor right now, it, it looks more grayish. But in person, that's what it looks like. This has been the same, albeit the shade. Everything's pretty much the same, that. Now in terms of the body, this is still a monocoque body or one penis, right? Trademark Vespa, monocoque still. For the brakes, we got ABS, as you can see, both front and and rear, as you can see. And for me, this is such a plus for the Vespa dual channel ABS. This one, uh, I love this about this body too. This is robust and solid, it's metal. That's the engine right there. Now, as for the lights, as you can see, it's still not LED. It would be cool if that would be LED already, but we do have some LED trim over here, but the signal light is still not LED. Over at the back, the signal, yep, not LED. Aha, this is different. Here, LED, so nice. Let's hit the brakes. You also got a light over here for the plate number. 
so let's talk about the seat right now this is very high quality i mean i have never seen a lousy seat from vespa yet my last two gtvs brilliant the the seat was just great you have lots of foam here look at how this is going down oh see it's going Way down, that's a lot of foam. That's a lot of foam. That's a lot of foam. If you're a guy and your balls are just right there, ah, perfect. If you're a girl, no problem. This seat, it looks like it can't accommodate a pillion, but it actually can. And this is where the pillion is gonna be seated. So good move on uh, Vespa with that. Press this lock button over here and you're gonna hear a click. Like so, and you can lift it. Ta-da. Oh, silica gel. <sighs> All right, so nice touch here. My old GTVs didn't have this before. So this is a great idea. And this, I guess, is heat insulation too because the engine is right under. If you pull this out, that's where the engine is. I'm glad, you know, that Vespa did something about this. My hacks before so as not to get a lot of heat in here. Like what if I wanted to put my phone there and stuff, right? So I used to put like some foil, that heat shield that you put in the dashboard, cut it out and put it there. So now they have this and this is, this is brilliant. So what kind of helmet can fit in there? A full face helmet will not fit. It just, it just, it just won't, right? It won't, it won't fit. Half face helmet. Let's see how to put this in. My half face helmet won't fit. It won't fit because of the bubble. Oops. So put it, let's see how to make this thing fit. Built well will not fit here. Put it this way. Nope. So a quarter is what's gonna fit in here. So that's why they sell GTV top boxes. And that's where you can put in a nice full face helmet should you wish. For a scoot this size, it's big, but its geometry will only allow certain things. Uh, you can put food, a jacket, your bag, with your wallet in it. And just for comparison, Chanel's check. I am a size 11, as you can see. So, and uh, get to compare only up to under my knee. Okay. So this, that's where the tools are. I remember that from the old one. Fuse, yes. This is different. USB port to charge your gadgets. Great, I didn't have that before. Space-wise, I could fit my Note 20, put more paperwork. You can also fit a toothbrush in there. So again, since we have a compartment there, Chanel is checked, that's for comparison, you can also fit. Okay, now if I were to nitpick something about this GTV, now we're talking about literally just nitpicking. By all means, this is not a deal breaker. I'm talking about these little things here. There's some scruff marks where this thing joined. This one somehow has a bit. This one has more. I don't know if you can just scrape it off or what. So I don't know what that's about. Because it's a Vespa, I'm not used to that. But maybe this could be a one-off and the others don't have this. I have to see another say journey. But uh, again, it's it's nothing. It's, it's just something I noticed. It's still a beautiful scooter for what it is. So another difference is this Vespa, this is now made in Vietnam. The previous ones, like the two GTVs that I had before, they were still made in Italy. Now, should it matter? Absolutely not. After riding this for so many days, I can tell you right now, it, I cannot tell the difference if this was made in Italy or made in Vietnam doesn't matter. And if you think about it, should it affect you if this was still made in Italy and made by Vietnamese immigrants who are living in Italy? You understand my point? The whole idea is Vespa is still by the Italians. Culturally speaking, it's still them, right? They just chose to make it in another place. That's not being racist at all. We're, we're talking about culture and heritage and lineage, right? So the whole Vietnam deal, don't worry about that. Did not affect the quality. It's still pretty much what it is. It's a Vespa at this level. Now with fuel consumption, I'd say this is where I'd highlight any improvements in the line. I used to get like 25, 27 KPL in my older GTVs and my LX150 would give me around 32 KPL. This Sage Journey with a bigger engine and more power gave me an eye-opening 31.397 KPL. Now I was pleasantly shocked. We have some progress here with power efficiency. Good job, Vespa.
so the good thing that's going for let's say journey is the fact that it's double channel ABS which means stopping power is safer now and we're gonna put it to the test first up that's the rear stopping power is all right you can feel the ABS working already no skids at all rear again now I was really biting into it and uh, pretty good you can actually hear it working try as I might no skid at all good job the front now pretty good ABS wasn't working yet Okay, I can't seem to make the front ABS bite maybe faster. Okay, it worked there. Whew. <laughs> Let's try both right now. Okay, compared to the other smaller displacement Vespas, this is heavier, right? And it's stopping quite nicely. Okay, pretty good. A little bit faster now, maybe around 40 kph. Let's stop. Nice. Oh, what you're hearing is me putting my feet down. That's what you're hearing. So that's not the tires, okay? So yeah, I wish the front would bite earlier in terms of the ABS working. Apart from that, with both of the brakes at the same time, really, really good stopping power. The good and where we can improve on. Vespa's evolution is at a snail space, so to speak. It can be looked at as a bad thing and a good thing. The bad, in a way, it questions Vespa's engineers' capability to innovate and move forward with more designs. And on the other hand, we can say the design is slow to develop because it just simply works. It's a classic design and it has consistently appealed throughout generations. So I can understand the front if they do say, what's to change? It's still beautiful. It's fine the way it is and people still buy it. Now, I'd have to agree with that point as well. So if not with looks, then maybe they can up the game further in the engine department and not take too long in between models. Models. If there's anything I'd see as an improvement, it would be more aggressive R&D in that aspect. At 435,000 short of half a million, you get a Vespa with a free original top box and a bracket and a lot of Italian mojo and class. At that price point and category, the Sage Journey immediately puts itself in an exclusive and premium market in our country. Yes, many will appreciate the Sage Journey, but not all will be able to afford it. And those that can will clearly see the value of what it can offer. That's what affordability to a person can do. The Sage Journey maintains Vespa's straight up no nonsense simplicity while tagging along a level of sophistication not found in other two wheeled automatics. The addition of the Sage Journey simply cements what I'd say a lot of people would agree on. Vespas are cool, they're beautiful, and forever will be. This is the Sage Journey. This is Zach from Makita Moto Features. Ciao.
watching love grow Forever Watching love grow 